Hey, brothers and sisters, I uh, just want to talk about division in the church. Um, a lot of people say, oh, look, that person is dividing the church because uh, he's talking about maybe an end-time doctrine or this doctrine of this or that doctrine of that. Uh, but I want to today expose the people that are really actually dividing the church. Uh, it's in the Bible. It says who they are. It's not guesswork. And so uh, I got about I don't know I'd say I got about four verses and then I got a whole uh, about eight verses in and one chapter there in Ephesians. But first of all, uh, what would the, what what's the idea? Why do they want to divide the church? Well, that's the only way for the church to fall. Once the church is divided, a church falls. Now uh, it says in uh, uh, Revelation 13. Get a pencil uh, pen, uh, pencil out. Get a or a pen a piece of paper. Write these verses down. I'd love to put them up on my screen so you can just read them. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing that. So just write them down. Look up. Verify these verses so that you know that uh, what you're hearing is the word of God. It is not come from man. Um, so it's uh, Revelations chapter 13, uh, uh, verse 6. It says, uh, and this is talking about the beast, the Antichrist, the dragon giving him his power. But basically here we're at the Antichrist. Uh, it says the Antichrist is going to have his power for 42 months. But look what it, has. it says. It, it opened, and I call it an it, because it's referring to it as a beast. Uh, not even referring to it as a person here. It. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name. Okay, that's the name of Jesus. And his dwelling place, which is heaven and the church. The church remember, the church is the temple of God. Okay, so he's going to slander the name of Jesus, and he's going to slander the church. And those who live in heaven. And he's going to slander the Christians. Ephesians 1 says, We are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. So the Christians positionally are seated in heaven. And so we're the ones in heaven. Um, the dwelling place of our Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is our bodies. We are the temple of God. Okay? So he's going to slander the name of Jesus. He's going to slander the church. And he's going, uh, uh, and he's going to slander the Christians. Okay? And it says in verse 7 then, it was given power to wage war against God's holy people, the church, and to conquer them. So, yes, uh, at one time, the church is going to be basically just... Now, that doesn't mean there won't be people inside churches around. It just means that the church is going to lose its power. It's, it's, I don't even want to say it's going to lose its power. That might be incorrect there. But it's going to just... It's going to be defeated. Okay? It's basically going to be on the terms of we surrender. Okay, the church is going to be conquered. Uh, it just, well, that's what it says, to conquer them. Okay, to conquer the church. Now, we know from Mark uh, 3, 25, there's only one way to conquer somebody. And pretty much everybody knows the way, and that is to divide them. The Bible says, unless a kingdom is divided, if you can get a kingdom divided against itself, it cannot stand. And so the reason the church is not going to stand is because it's going to be divided. The Bible talks about division, disunity all the time, all over the place. What causes it? And we're not going to go into everything here. But the church will be divided. And I'm going to tell you, brother, brothers and sisters, right now, I want to make this a five, a ten minute video, I guess, now, but uh, try to. But the church is divided. And that's why it's so weak, and that's why it's falling apart. And uh, we're going to get into to why. Uh, what can we do to stop it? But there is actually one certain reason why the church is divided. And I'm going to prove it to you in the Bible why. And who's doing it, okay? And we need to stop that. We need to stop this division. And it's a horn. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a doctrine, okay, that is dividing the church. Uh, and I'm going to prove it to you in the Bible. Real fast, though, Jude 1.4 says... Fight for the faith. Contend for the faith that was once given to us. Okay? It's, it's the faith that's going to be divided, brothers and sisters. So we have to, we have to focus on the reality. What's going to be divided is going to be our faith. Okay? And, and it's going to be who believe in the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, and then, so we have to fight. We have to contend. Okay? Who are we going to fight with or against? Uh, the Bible says it's not against flesh and blood. It's not a gift against a person, but it's against a person's doctrine. It's against their belief system. The Bible says in Ephesians uh, six twelve, 
Look these verses up. I'm just going to kind of quote it. But there's, it, it, there's different reasons, different powers. They're all spiritual powers, but it says, but spiritual forces of evil, okay? Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's not against a person, but it's against doctrine. It's, it, it's against spiritual forces. Okay, those are doctrines. Spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Heavenly realms against what are we talking about? We're talking about the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's spiritual forces inside the churches. There's doctrines inside the churches being pulled and stuff. And they're waging war against us, brothers and sisters. They're causing division in the church. And I want to go back to the very first division that it caused. And this is where all divisions are coming from. And that's the division that Jesus Christ healed. Okay? So, and then it says in uh, Jude 1, 19, uh, to build up our most holy faith. Okay? Because the people that are dividing us, or the systems that are dividing us, are on natural instincts. Okay? So it's the spiritual against the natural. We have natural doctrines, and we have spiritual doctrines. And the natural doctrines are against the, our faith, and they're conquering our faith, and they're dividing the church. They're wedging themselves in, they're just pounding, 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 pounding. Now the Bible says it's going to happen, and it is happening. And this is what I want you to bring your attention to, brothers. I, brothers and sisters, I want everybody to, to lift up arms, not against flesh and blood, not against your pastors or leaders, not against your church, but against false doctrines, against things that people are preaching and teaching that are false, that are not spiritual, but natural, that deny Christ. I mean, if you have a doctrine, some doctrines deny Christ completely. Some doctrines only deny Christ that much. But if there's a doctrine in your church that is denying Christ, even a little bit, we need to fight against that. Okay? Because that's actually what is dividing the church. It's not going to be you dividing the church. It's not the ones that are contending for the faith that are, that are, that are dividing the church. Okay? The ones here the Bible is clear about who's dividing the church is the spiritual forces. The people that are promoting these false doctrines. These are the people that are dividing the church. Never will it be one that takes up arms or takes up and, and contends for the faith. It's not that person that divides the church. Okay? It's not that doctrine that divides the church. But those who bring up false doctrines, false teachings, okay, that are dividing the church. I'm going to get to the main one today. I don't want to deal with a bunch of little penny any things here, guys. None of them are penny any, but I want to bring up the main one. And that is, what did Jesus do the moment he died on the cross? What did his blood actually do? Okay? And uh, to, to, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? We went on, okay, Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to go verse 12. It says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ. Okay, we were separated, divided, if you say, from, from Christ. Excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Without hope and without God in this world. Okay? That's where we were. We were separated. We were divided from God, from His people, from everything. But here's, here's the reality now, what happened the moment Jesus Christ died on the cross. Verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who, were, you who were, were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. So what did the blood of Jesus do? It brought us near. It brought us together. It brought us, it hooked us into God. It hooked us into God's plan. It hooked us into God's promises. All God's promises are yes and amen for the Christians, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay? It brought us where? It brought us in. It connected us. It made unity between us and God. Okay? This is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That, what was divided, He brought together. Okay? So then it goes on to, on to say further, and verse three, what, what happened then at that time? Verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, 
the dividing wall of hostility. Okay? So here we see that Christ, he made the two groups. He made the Jews and the Gentiles under Jesus Christ one single group. He said he broke the barriers. Okay? So now Israel is the church. The church is Israel. Okay? Now, are Jews Israel? Yes, if they receive Jesus Christ. Are Gentiles Israel? Well, yes, if they receive Jesus Christ. Okay? Under Jesus Christ, they become Jews and Gentiles, become one. They become the Israel of God. They become the true church of God. The gathered out ones. The called ones. The ones that have all the promises. The ones that have all the covenants of God. The ones that have all the hope. And how did Jesus do this? By His blood. Okay? By His blood. Verse 15 says, By setting aside in, in His flesh the law with its commandments and regulations, His purpose was to create in Himself, because this is Jesus, guys, one new humanity. Now, I'm sure uh, the other, the, a, a, better, a better translation would be the King James, and I believe it says one new uh, man. Okay? Out of the two, thus making peace. What did Jesus do? He brought unity to both Jew and Gentile. Under Jesus Christ, he made him one new man. And by doing so, he made perfect peace. Jesus did make peace on the cross with his blood. Between who? The Jews and the Gentiles. One new person. One new man. Jesus Christ. So then it goes on to say, oh yeah, um, one new man. That's making peace. It says, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God. So he brought, it says, in one body. What are we talking about here, guys? The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. He brought Jew and Gentile into it. He made one body. He didn't make two. A body for the Jews and a body for the uh, Greek, uh, Gentiles. He brought one body. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It doesn't say two bodies or three bodies. One single body. Uh, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. Okay? Some people believe, oh no, the Je God has a different plan for the, Je uh, the Jews. The Jews are going to see Jesus coming out of the sky, and boom, all of a sudden they're going to believe. Oh, what about Jesus on the cross? Here it says, He made them one. How? By dying on the cross for them. Okay? One new body through the cross. And, and which He put to death their hostility. He put to death all the fighting that was between them. It says hostility. Between not only them, but between them and God also. Okay? But now people have crept into the churches. And they're trying to, to divide this again. The very thing that Christ Jesus brought together. Okay? Now we have to look at about four more verses here. In the same passage. We're in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? And we're going to go to uh, verse... We're in verse... Uh, um, we're going to jump up to verse 19. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people. Look at that. And also members of His household. We are members of the household of God. God said the name of His household was Israel. But we are members of that. So we are now members of the household of God. Okay? Through what? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, verse 20. Look, and look, look what it's built on. Built on the foundation of the apostles. So we know the apostles were New Testament. So yeah, the church was built on the apostles' teachings. We know that. But look, it goes on further to say what else it was. And prophets. Old Testament. See, the church was not just built on the New Testament. It was built on the Old and New Testament. He brought them together under Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus did. Okay? He came to fulfill. So, the church was not just built on the apostles. Some people, oh, well, the church is over here, and Jews are over here, and God's got two different plans. No! He says, under the apostles and the prophets together, God has one plan. Okay? One plan. One church. One body. Okay, under Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say, hey, and Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Verse 22. And in him you two are being built together 
to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. And in Him, you too are being built together. Okay? The Jews and the Gentiles together. Okay? Together in one body which is called the church of the living God, which is called the Israel of Jesus Christ, the Israel of God. Okay, that is what the church is. The new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of God, Mount Zion, Hebrews 12.22. But now here's what I want to get to the point of division. Who is causing division? See, Jesus Christ brought this together. And now people are taking access to it. People are taking access to what God has done. And they're trying to divide. They're trying to separate the church from Israel. They're trying to separate the church from Israel. And the Bible says that the devil is actually going to come and he's actually going to, Revelation 13, 7, he's actually going to conquer the church. How is he going to do it? He's going to separate the Jews from the Gentiles. And, 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 and actually, that's probably the, the best wording when he's going to separate Israel from the church. Brothers and sisters, there's no more, well, I don't want to say there's another sin. There's probably a sin worse than this. But our, our strength in the church comes through unity in Jesus Christ. The people that are dividing Israel and the church are dividing the church of the living God. They're taking what Jesus Christ did on the cross with his blood by bringing them together and they're throwing it in his hands. That's why they're, they're, they're throwing it in his face. That's why Revelation says they're going to slander his name. Slander. Jesus Christ brought us together. He brought Israel and the, and, 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 and the church together. He brought the Gentiles and the Jews under Jesus Christ together. And now people are saying, oh no, God's got a different plan for the Jews. We don't love them. You know? Come on. Anybody that says God has a different plan for the Jews hates the Jews. They're actually throwing mud in their face. No. God said, hey, if you're a Jew out there listening to me right now, God has a plan for you, brother. Well, I, and I don't want to call you brother yet, but friend, God has a plan for you. In Jesus Christ, when you receive Jesus Christ, you are going to be part of His Israel. You're going to be part of His church. That's the plan Jesus Christ has for you from the very foundation of this world through the prophets and through the apostles which are the foundations and Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. See, brothers and sisters, please do not allow those people amongst you to keep dividing you, to keep separating you. And they're, and they're separating the most, the most basic thing of the body of Christ. They're separating, the, they're ripping the body of Christ apart they're saying, well, this arm belongs to the Jews and this arm belongs to the Gentiles. No. We all belong to Christ. We can't say that the Jewish people cannot come into the church. We can't say that the Gentiles can't be, come into the church or that the, the church is not Israel. Israel and the church are the same, brothers and sisters. Just a different name today. But the Israel, Jesus Christ is the real Israel of, the, uh, of God. The church is the real Israel of God. We have received all His promises. So any brother, brothers and sisters, where does real division come from? And why are people dividing the church? Because they want to conquer the church. And I tell you what, guys, we're just about this close from the church being divided. I know they've worked super hard here, and especially in America. And, and a preacher after preacher, and everybody, and it starts with... I hate to say it, but you know what? Dispensationalism. Their main core, according to one of them, is that Israel is not the church. Dispensationalism, brothers and sisters, are dividing the church. And it's, they're causing many people to fall into error and sins. I'm asking all pastors, all believers in Jesus Christ right now, do not make that fatal mistake. I know it's prophesied that you will. It's prophesied that there, there is going to be division in the church. Okay? And that, that, and, and that the Antichrist is going to overcome. This is what the Antichrist is doing. He's dividing the church right now, brothers and sisters. And I'm just telling you, wake up. Pray to the Lord. Pray with all your might. Ask the Lord for, for forgiveness, brothers and sisters. Ask, ask the Lord to restore us to unity. 
unity under Jesus Christ and His very blood that brought the Gentiles and the Jews under Christ into the new Israel, into the heavenly Jerusalem, into the new Jerusalem, brothers and sisters. Only with this unity will we ever be restored to power. Even Paul said, hey, when the Jews come to Christ, want to be even, even so powerful that we'll see the resurrection of the dead. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the church is not complete without the Jews coming to Jesus Christ. And I mean not sometime in the future when he sees them coming in his glory. I mean right now. The Jews need to come into the church. Please stop kicking them out. I know a lot of people are kicking them out. They're trying to kick them out. Saying, get out of here. God has a different plan for you. Okay? Don't you know that you're God's special people and you got to get over here? And they're telling the church, oh, you guys are, you guys are garbage. You're not God's special people. Okay? Brothers and sisters, no. The church is the body of Jesus Christ. And that is both, and there's place in the body of Jesus Christ for both Jew and Gentile by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm asking everybody in the name of Jesus, please stop dividing the church of, e of Jesus Christ. Please stop operating in the natural, like, like Jude 119 says. Start operating in the spirit. Stop thinking, of, the Bible says we are a spiritual priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices. Please, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that he who has the mind of the, of the, of the flesh will die, but him with the mind of the spirit shall live. Please get back into the spiritual. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that Jews and Gentiles under Jesus Christ would be the holy Israel of God. May God bless you and till we see each other again. I want to, actually, guys, I said that. I want to go to Ephesians 4 real fast. Um, I already said it, I guess, but I'm just going to read the, read the verses and I'll probably let you go here. But Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 3. And up to five, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Who is over all and through all and in all. See brothers and sisters, it's just saying in Ephesians 4 here. Uh, verse 3, uh, up 6 there I read. There's only one faith, brothers and sisters. And that faith is Jesus Christ. Okay? That faith is that we are the body of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head. And Jesus Christ is the body of God. And God is the head of Jesus Christ. Okay? There's God, Jesus Christ, the church. And we are, we are the body of Jesus Christ. Who? One faith. Not Gentiles over here, Jews over there. We are one. Okay? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation for all those who believe, first for the Jew and also for the Gentile. Brothers and sisters, there is only one faith. One faith. Do not let anybody tell you any different. If, if you are under somebody say, uh, telling you something different, Correct them. Brothers and sisters, it's not time to get out of the body of believers. If the body of believers is being conquered by the Antichrist right now, this is not the time to leave the body of believers. It's the time to stand up, spread, testify, witness to what you've heard and what you've seen. Witness to the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, brothers and sisters. Okay? God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next time.